Ludwig, a streamer who seemingly blew up out of nowhere, but now no one can stop talking about him. I'm Anthony Padilla, and today I'm gonna find out why he says that despite being massively popular right now, he knows for a fact he's gonna fall off and become irrelevant. And I'll find out how witnessing death at a young age and learning to accept it has led to his extreme confidence. I mean, he literally said directly to the CEO of YouTube space. Hello, Ludwig. How you doing, man? This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. Now, I can't say this to many people. Okay. But you and I have both interviewed Susan Wojcicki. We have. And I had to literally write down phonetically Wojcicki before our interview. That's how you say it? Isn't it? I thought it was Wojcicki. You're, you're throwing a T in there. I, you is could it, be is right. It not, is it Wojcicki or Wojcicki? Don't let me sway you. You're right. I did it virtually too. You did it in person, yes. which I can only imagine how much more nerve wracking that would be. I think I wasn't nervous, because... I, I, <laughs> How the f*** were you not nervous to interview the CEO of YouTube, you know, who has the power of your entire over your entire career, potentially? I was initially nervous, because they have, like, basically SEAL Team 6 go to your house before the interview to check every single corner, see what's cammed up, see what's mic'd up. Like, they cover everything. And then I had to, like, tell them every single thing I was going to do in the interview. And so I was very anxious going in. Right. And I was like, I don't want to be anxious. That sounds like shit. Yeah. So I decided to lie to them. And I oh. added something to the interview that I didn't let them know about. Oh. So you took the route of being deceptive. Yes. I showed her a picture of a frog. Oh, yeah. That was at a bus stop mm -hmm. that could be interpreted that he was hanging himself. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't doing that. He oh, was just, totally he was waiting not. for a bus. So I'm incredibly anxious up till that moment. But then when yeah. she played off of it so well, I was like, yeah. oh, she's great. This is great. Let's go. Weren't you nervous about her watching the newest episode before coming on? Our podcast is a little raunchy. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen an episode. Oh, yeah. I start pulling my pud in the corner. <laughs> You like a pig. <laughs> Boba p***y and weed. Who's gonna suck me to completion the best? Yeah. We are four men. Dirty and men. Dirty men. Dirty, dirty men who've lived mm. together for a long time. And so we have a lot of inside jokes. And, and one of them... <laughs> I can't say this. I can't say... I'm embarrassed about the people around here hearing me right now. I like how you can't even say... You can't even can't bring yourself this. to say I it. I can't say this in this format. I feel seedier when I'm in that attic. Mm, all right? I'm a mm. darker... I'm a different uh, human. Right. You're a little dirty, a little... Here. Yes, I'm much here. Mm -hmm. There was a watch party downstairs and I could hear them. Yeah. And at one point, I just say that, yeah, you know, our podcast doesn't get demonetized a lot, even though we talk about... Mm. And then after I said the word, there was an audible, <clears throat> and after that was it, like, I went downstairs, they're like, everybody cringed. That was the worst thing you could have While done. While watching the episode, I cringed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It I, was a visceral, like. I didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. I'm too in my own bubble with, with three other men in that room that I didn't think like how uncouth of me. Right, right. Talking to like a, like an, a, a, a proper adult woman and saying, I'm so haphazard. I'm doing it now, and you're you're you're. I know I'm bringing out path. the worst in you. Bringing me down bad <laughs> path. Back to cuteness. <laughs> How have you been able to hone in on so many different skills? I mean, like like I said, that's not even your full time job to interview people. Still better than me. And you're also live streaming regularly, doing standard YouTube videos, throwing huge events, raising money for charity, repaying people who've been scammed on Twitch. Just a day day in the life, I guess. I I, I honestly, th what I found is that. There are streamers who have tried to become YouTubers to great success, yeah. and there are YouTubers who have attempted to, uh, to become streamers to much more middling success. Yeah. And I've noticed that the streaming skill is much more versatile yeah. because you don't have the opportunity to re-record. I think streamers are jack of all trades yeah. and can do a podcast really well because it's mm -hmm. not too different from streaming and talking to someone. True, true. They can make a YouTube video, sketch content, mm -hmm. because that they are forced to do everything in a single take. As opposed to like Logan Paul when he tried streaming for a bit and he was throwing plates on the ground after Fortnite losses. Uh-huh. Doesn't hit as hard. Doesn't right. hit as hard as his vlog content did. I got started on YouTube 17 years ago. Obviously live streaming was not a thing and it was all so precise. Everything was so calculated. Like I would do 12 takes of saying one word, bitch, or something like that. And we would find the perfect take that was in one take, right? That Thank was amazing. You. Thank you. I have been honing in on my craft since then. But everything was so meticulously crafted without any room for error. 
Yeah. You know? And it became this thing where I felt like everything had to be perfect and if anything was slightly out of place, everything was ruined. But you're live streaming 90 hours a month or more and every single minute is kind of practice of being on it and mm -hmm. being able to quickly adapt to any situation that you're in. Today, on the drive over here, I, I, I played um, the video of you talking about how you were scammed out of $100,000, and it, I, it was riveting. So sad. Your suffering is so entertaining and captivating. <laughs> Why does it have to be my suffering? <laughs> it was a great story, yeah. because it was true, and and I did get scammed out of $100,000. Yes, you did. Which doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> is it because you're too trusting? I think so, I think I give the benefit of the doubt, and uh, and I get scammed very easily. In that mm. story, the person who scammed me, yeah. it kind of ended that where I, where I kept an eye on them. You didn't press charges. I didn't press charges. I found out they scammed again. Does yeah. that make you want to press charges now? Here's why I'm so good at getting scammed, no. Short stories, they scammed me at $100,000. They moved to Texas to try to get a regular job. They fell back into the cycle of gambling because they're an addict. They, tr they roped in like three people at a bowling alley they worked at. And then because the video was so popular, the people who worked at that bowling alley hit me up. Oh, they had seen it? Yes, and then the private investigator looked into it and then I, I'm, I got him to pay back all the people uh, before it became a problem. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm, I feel like a parent in a way. Yeah. <laughs> where I have like a watchful eye through a private investigator uh. to make sure that, that he's not scamming anyone. Uh huh. But it's kind of working. Have you ever been scammed? Mmm. <laughs> not necessarily scammed, but someone did use a weird system to get hold of my phone number and therefore all of my accounts and try to get hold of my PayPal. Oh, so they tried to just hack you. They did hack my Twitter. And it's kind of wild because you know the person that they spoofed in order to get me to give up my info. I received a call, Cody Co, on my phone. I'm like, oh shit, we're homies, what's up? I pick up, he's like, what's up, Anthony? I'm like, yo, it sounds exactly like him. They're like, can you do me a quick favor? And I thought that I was getting pranked for like a YouTube video or something. He's like, go to this Twitter account, follow it. So I go to this Twitter account and I'm like, uh, I am not gonna follow this account. Super fishy, I was like, uh, okay, yeah, gonna hang up now because I did not know what was going on. I go to sleep, the next morning I wake up to my phone going off because they had gained access to my cell phone number. And then I don't know how that call from that person spoofing Cody Co's voice and phone number got access to my phone, but then they had also gotten into my Twitter and they had linked the account that they tried to get me to follow. So and they, they were trying to get Cody? Yes, and when I contacted Cody, he was like, oh, people have been spoofing my number and my voice. Dude, the voice? I don't know how they did that, unless they threatened him and it was actually him. <laughs> or he's just actually a scammer on the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cody's just like- It's your time to admit it. <laughs> Come clean. Man. I'm not gonna be mad. Go I clean. promise. I'll be mad on his behalf. <laughs> Have you always been this confident? I think I've always had a relatively high confidence, and it's always come from a philosophy that I've carried with me since I was pretty young. That it maybe naively I've always thought it, everything will work out because it kind of has to. What do you mean it has to? Well, because it either works out how you want it to, or you've tried and it doesn't work out how you planned, but life still moves on or the absolute worst case is you die, and I'm okay with that. All options are fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, you're like, the flow of life will happen. Yeah. Time will continue moving. As it does. Or you die. Or you die. And then it still moves without you and everyone's still chilling. And I, I'm not seeking, I admit this could come off like I'm seeking right. death, that's not the goal. Right. But I'm also acceptant, acceptant, accepting. I'm an English major, acceptance a word, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. making that a word. Mm -hmm. I'm acceptant of it, mm -hmm. of death. Was there anything in your childhood that kind of showed you that the worst case scenario is death and that, you know, you could be confident with anything you, you're, you're doing leading up to that eventual outcome that will happen? Yeah, my dad died. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh wait, people can die. Right. I remember when I was really young, I asked my mom once because I love video games and I straight up said, I was like, how many lives do we get? Because I was like, I'm just playing Mario 64 and you like start with like three off. Yeah. So I was like, how many do we get? And she's like, one. And I was like, blows. <laughs> you, you can't even make a mistake and then fall off the edge of a cliff and then come back and learn from your mistake? Yeah, I was like, say I get 100 coins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I was like, oh, death is a real thing. And then when my dad died, it's much realer because I, you know, I had to confront it and I was 10. Because I was so young, it really shaped like my relationship with death. Mm. I think more so than most people, like you, you start a relationship a lot earlier 
because uh, it's easier to like detach or disassociate with the death of like maybe a pet or a grandparent, not to like devalue those, but it's expected in a way. Mm -hmm. And and maybe you're, you're told that. So like if it happens when you're young and you have a great grandparent or whoever, and they're 90, mm -hmm. it's like, it's talked about differently than like, yeah. you know, your, your dad who's like supposed to be around. How did you change that mindset? I feel like that's such a difficult thing. Like people spend their entire lives becoming as zen as possible to accept death. I think it started with faking it. So it's like, it was an initial fear. And then it's like, maybe fake that I accept this. Mm. And then eventually like, fake it till you make it, I think is a really powerful thing that works beyond, you know, getting a job that you shouldn't have. I think people really see faking anything to be like kind of a negative thing. Like, oh, he's faking. But in this sense, it was actually good for you to fake like you were cool with death. And then eventually with enough faking, you were able to like just train yourself to think that way. Yeah, I think so. I think that was like how it started. And mm -hmm. I think that at least let me have an honest conversation with myself about it. Mm. But I, I don't know, I don't think faking it's a problem. I, I think you need to be genuine at points. Mm -hmm. you can't become a fake person, but faking things also puts you in situations you wouldn't normally be comfortable with, Yeah, which allows you to like grow a bit. But it's almost like be the person that you wanna be even if you're not ready. Yeah. And then when the opportunities present themselves for you to be ready, you've already been in the mindset that I am that person. Yeah, and I think that like the person that you will be is something that you arbitrarily decide now and work mm -hmm. towards, mm -hmm. and it could be anything. What do you see your future self as? I'm pretty short-term thinker. You're pretty short? Yeah, like... <laughs> Term? Think Sorry, I you just got off to a heard you great right. start. <laughs> <laughs> I complimented you enough to get that one out. <sighs> I think I'm a short-term thinker. Uh, I'm a tall man, short-term thinker. Yes. Six two on my license, mm -hmm. in the sense that I like to think no more than like maybe a year or two ahead of time. Although my mentality is do whatever you want because it'll always work out because it has to. Yeah. Part of that might be rooted in confirmation bias because it has worked out. I am able to say it from a point of privilege, which I feel like is worth noting. Yeah. And it's much easier to say it because it has worked out. Yeah. And it's much harder to have that mentality when it doesn't work out. In that sense, do you feel like you're kind of like, whatever happens, happens? You know, I hear I hear different words like letting go, surrendering, that type of mentality. Yeah, what is that from? Different philosophical writings mm. and, and spiritual teaching. Are you a philosophy man? Lately, I've really enjoyed learning about different things about psychology and philosophy. W give a wreck. Michael Singer. What is Michael Sing about? He talks about basically the art of surrendering to the way that life goes. You could live your life trying to force everything to be exactly the way you want and thinking that things will only go my way if I force them to. Right. Or you kind of take the approach that the universe has taken over 13.8 billion years and it's just, it'll eventually work out. That's a much more Eastern thought process, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think that it, uh, a lot of Eastern spiritual teachings do kind of play into letting the universe, letting whatever force you believe to be the force take the lead. Right. And Western's like, grab by the balls. And they're like, work, 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 capitalism, baby, go. Something I love doing is I take, I have a Vespa and I yeah. like riding my Vespa and I ride it at sunset mm -hmm. to go watch the sunset. And then I stretch at the sunset. Nice. Cause you know, you gotta limber up. Oh yeah. I do it like three times a week, maybe four times a week. Uh huh. And when I go there, uh, I met this this Taiwanese man. He's like 50 years old, and his name is Tsungla. Okay. Great guy. Oh. And he's been teaching me a bit about some of like the Eastern philosophies that he learned growing up because they teach it in school, in in most like Asian countries. Isn't that wild? We are taught nothing about that. No. No mentality. No perception of life and death. Like maybe at college you like get a philosophy 101 class, a psych 101. And that's been the highlights of like my year is running into this 50 year old Taiwanese dude. Cause it's very easy to get wrapped up and be like streaming his life. And then I meet Tsung La and he's like, oh yeah, what's Twitch again? And I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, so. What kind of values is he teaching you? What are you guys talking about? Allowing the force of the world and, and then trying to like, um, maneuver through that rather than like, you know, force will in certain ways. So it's mm. like, it, that's why I thought of it is because it's, it's similar to what you talked about with Michael Singer, man. There we go. So it's kind of, if I were to put that visually in a metaphor is it would be like paddling through the water, through the river, yeah. it's still pushing you. You're still going where it wants, but you get to guide it a little bit versus 
steamboat with an engine and you're like, Upstream. I'm going against the stream. Yeah. Nature does not want this to happen, but I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. I'm going to take what I want. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's exactly like that. It's cool to see that perspective and talk to a to a dude who, has, who doesn't give a shit about that I'm a streamer or YouTuber. You're just a guy. It's just a guy. With f f fish flops. With fish flops. <laughs> and and, and soon I'll be like, damn, the fish flops again? You know he's doing an interview right now. He's like, ah, there's this guy with fish flops <laughs> that I meet. Yeah, Taiwanese news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird ass guy. <laughs> How many hours are you working in a day in front of camera? Probably about 30 hours a week. Do you think you'll slowly pull away from being on camera that much? Not anytime soon like for the next year mm -hmm. probably it'll be like the same mm -hmm. but like maybe after that then it's like 20 hours maybe mm -hmm. i whittle it down to 15 something like that i mean you have youtube coming to you with exclusive deals how did you get to that point dude i got so lucky <laughs> it was all luck it was a lot of luck what like all success is it at least from my perspective is 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 work that is matched with opportunity and like it, it might never come. Mm -hmm. It might come, and you weren't ready for it. We, you got to be ready for the come. Mm. And and so I was, I was just streaming a lot to like decent success. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd gone full time after I got fired from my job at a vape company. Shout out to IQ Vapes. Mm -hmm. They made vapes that looked like iPods, so kids could smoke them in schools. Oh, cool! So I was here. It's the, the cool world, way to smoke. Way. Yeah, it was really, it was really cool that they could deceive teachers and mm -hmm. still get nicotine in at the age of 16. Oh, good. So we were heroes. Real quick, by the way, I yeah. did have a genius marketing plan that would reduce all of the nicotine levels month by month over the course of the year. So you go from smoking like 50 mg nicotine vapes to zero with the goal of making people quit. And I pitched it to the CEO, this dude from China, yeah. in a meeting, go for an hour, I have a bunch of slides. I made up almost all the numbers because I don't know how people find numbers. And then he sits there and he goes, this is the best presentation I've ever seen. Our products are too shit to actually do it. Well, That's and right. it would also make people not addicted to the product, which is kind of going against what companies usually want. Yeah, my pitch to them was that, yes, you are right, but the industry will continue to make people addicted to the product. So if you are a foil to the industry, mm -hmm. then you will thrive because no one else is doing that. I still think it'd be a successful idea today, probably. Damn, so it could have been sick, but they fired you and then you said streaming, here I come. Streaming, here I come. I was doing that for a while just trying to get as good as I could. Mm -hmm. He like maybe like thousand average viewers. Mm -hmm. And then it was like COVID, bang. The website tripled in size. Bang, Pog Champs, the chess event, took over all of the website. Chess became like a phenomenon yeah. in like internet culture. And you were at the head of it. And then I, it like it was instantly 10,000 viewers. Mm. And what, what felt like overnight. Mm -hmm. And then And then you know what happens the next month, Anthony? Among Us. And then, so many people I've interviewed have had their careers like pop off when Among Us. 10,000 average viewers to 20,000. Mm -hmm. Like almost like in the span of six months. You met Saikuno. Oh yeah. How would you describe him? Uh, very calm and a little shy. And soft, -spoken, soft spoken. Sweet. Very sweet man. And I hop in mm -hmm. and I'll be like, Saikuno, you dumbass piece of shit. And yeah. it's, it's again another foil to like what was like a very wholesome lobby. True. And so I think that people liked that. Not everyone did. No. Certainly. But there was a hole in the market and you jammed yourself and you rammed yourself in there. I just like being that person. Yeah. I was typecasted when I did plays when I was younger as the asshole boyfriend. So you knew that that's how you had to embrace. That's who I am. That's, 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 that's my, that's my guy. You did the subathon as well. That was crazy how many days did that end up being 31 31 full days sleeping eating mm -hmm. pissing and shitting and mm -hmm. uh, definitely the latter do you know about that should i i lived my life on stream for a month and one night i was sleeping and i woke up and i i myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was alone for a month, man. Uh -huh. I was alone for a month. And every move was was recorded. Maybe well, it's it wasn't like it wasn't like a clip. It's not like there was a right. moment and it was like you know Shamu jumping in water. It was right. like it happened. I woke up and I was like, damn. Was all the chat like they didn't know? Oh, that was just a you moment. It was a me moment. They didn't uh -huh. know. They didn't know because I had blankets on me. Right. So I just got up and I was like, and I walked over with the towel, like the blanket on me, and I yeah. went to the bathroom and I cleaned myself and uh -huh. then I came back and I, did, I was very embarrassed. 
but I am very honest and upfront with my stream. I feel like it's an, an important part of being a streamer. Did you mention it right away? I didn't, because I was embarrassed. It yeah. took me about, I would say, until a week after the subathon to come clean. For like the, the day it happened, the whole day, I was like, should I tell him? Should I talk about it? This happened. Did you feel like they knew? I, I, I knew they didn't know, so I was like, I'll tell them on my own time. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. But still, it was on your mind. What was that feeling like after the 31 days of being on camera? Where afterwards, were you like, oh, fuck, I'm bored? I what? openly wept. Did you? Yeah, I openly wept because I ended it. I had a big speech. I'm a big speech guy because yeah. I'm a theater kid. So I did like a big old speech, thanked everyone for being a part of it because, you know, it's, it's the first time I'd ever been like number one on Twitch, not just in terms of subs, but like in viewership. Uh, News article, everything, everyone yeah. was talking about you. That's when, that's actually when I first heard about you. Everyone was talking about Ludwig at that moment. Right, and it was like a whirlwind of mostly positivity. And so like, I just, I just, uh, like it was such a great thing to like mm -hmm. after, just soak in. Cause after you end stream, there's still a chat and they were all just like, you know, saluting mm. and and feel strong manning. And I just sat there and I just wept openly for like 10 minutes. So you close the stream and then you just uh huh just sat there did just didn't move just cried just be, being happy just happy. What emotions were coming out? Like a sense of achievement, I think. I think it's probably and I've never been good at anything physically ever, but akin to like winning a championship of sorts and like instant emotions of like oh the work has paid off, but instead of grinding football, I myself and stayed live for 31 days mm -hmm. that really hits hard you know <laughs> almost i'm stronger than the marines some have said because mm -hmm. you can hit harder i can hit harder not nocturnally mm -hmm. and i don't hit women so right <laughs> so that that is a win-win win 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 mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that feeling of achievement was it just like I did something? Was it the legacy aspect of it? It culminated in a moment because it was the 31st day that I broke the record uh, and the 31st day that I, w I had like the largest viewership I ever had, 200,000 people. So it's just, it's overwhelming stimuli. It's one of the few times in life where there's such a clear finite end to a positive thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and like for, for example, streaming success or YouTube success doesn't really have that. There's not like necessarily a moment where you're like, man, we did that. No, it's like, okay, next thing, go, right. go do the next thing. But this is something that ended and it right. will never happen again. Right. So th th you get that opportunity and then so, it all came crashing down. Before the subathon, I averaged 20,000 viewers. In your head where you like, this is built, like 200,000 people were watching, that's, did you imagine that would be your Dude. returning viewership? I was like, hands up. I'm like, I'm the man now. Like, I kind of run this website. So it's like, if you want to like get to the top, you kind of got to talk to me first. 200,000 people are going to be coming back to see what Ludwig has to say. And it took me a while to figure it out. And I was like, okay, nobody actually cared about the content I was making during the subathon. It was a news story. It was an event. It was something to be a part of. But people cared much more about that than me. And without that, when they saw my content, they were like, I mean, it's all right. And I was losing about an average of a thousand followers a day for the month after, which really sucked. Was your self-worth attached to that? Like, oh, that means something about you? I think I put a lot of self-worth into viewership in those numbers. Yeah. And so very quickly, in fact, like the month after, I spent that whole month diverting where I put my self-worth. That was the first thing I did. I was like, okay, rather than, you know what, let's lift myself up on my bootstraps and try to make things that people like and do another event. It's like, I just gotta stop caring about a stupid number on a screen. Mm. And so that's when I made the podcast that I did. That's when I started working on other projects. It's where I conceived like larger stream events. Right. And I was like, okay, let's be proud of making something cool. Let's be mm. proud of uplifting those around us. And let's not be so proud about a, a number. I'm still like very aware that it's like, oh, I still have a really dope job. You know, oh, yeah. it, 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 I still have it better than than so many people because I think my job's in like 0.001% of cool jobs. I get to sit next to Anthony Padilla, which, Thank is, you. which is tight. Yeah, Ludwig Ogren. You nailed it. Were you worried I'd say Padilla? No, but I was worried I would say something wrong with your oh, last name. No, it's chill. You got it. You yeah, nailed it. Yeah, I knew you would get Padilla. I've up my own name. You have? It's Ludwig. 
It's Ludwig. Yeah, that's how you say it. That's so funny. Kathy Sue, she was like, is it pronounced Ludwig? I was like, no, nah, it's Ludwig. I bastardized did, it. What, when your parents named you, did they say, this is our beautiful child, Ludwig? My mom calls me Ludwig. She's French. So she has a French accent on the German root. She studied German. Yeah. So she'll go Ludwig when I went to school. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, those second graders don't love the name Ludwig. <laughs> That's, that doesn't just roll off the tongue for second graders? Doesn't resonate. Mm. When I showed up and I got a sheep of some handmade, you know, French meal, and I open yeah. it up, it starts stinking up the classroom, everyone uh -huh. else got PB and J, uh -huh. and I'm the Ludwig guy, get ostracized pretty quick. So I was like, we gotta adapt here, mom. We gotta start, it's PB and J's, all right? I'll eat the crust, not a big deal. It's Ludwig now. You had an identity shift. I have to, I have uh -huh. to. I can't be this European guy. Uh, you assimilated into American culture. Very quick. You became the Ludwig with the PB and J. I had to be a New Hampshire guy. Uh -huh. Quickly got to fentanyl, all uh -huh. right? That's a big thing mm -hmm. for New Hampshire rights. You gotta get there quick, you gotta get there, and it's gotta be quick. If you're not hitting it by 10, you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so I made yeah. all those changes real quick. Right. So that's why it's Ludwig, bastardized. Padilla is Spanish. It is Spanish. Because you look Spanish. Oh, I do. Yeah. I'm a good, I'm a, I'm a hefty percentage. Also Filipino though, because a lot of Spaniards mm. conquered. They did a lot of conquering. There, there was a lot of imperialism that happened. We and can I just talk so about it. to be the product of it. There was some conquering. I just found out. You didn't do no conquering. Found out my great, 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 great grandfather was a priest who dabbled. In Congress? In, in, um, in uh, the Filipino women. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. But it also brought them God, and they love God. So. They brought me. Close second. Yeah, I can't imagine there's much Filipino blood in you. Well, there's 15%. Really? Yeah. I don't know how you ended up like 6'2. That's crazy. No, I'm 5'11. Are you? Yeah. I feel like you're taller than me. I have a little bit, I have a one inch heel. Still. It's an illusion. Do, no, you are not 5'11", nice. you're lying. How tall are you? I'm six foot three. <laughs> you're actually not 5'11", I promise you. You're not. How? You're Did not, I... you're wrong. You know wrong. what? Take off my, I have a little one incher here. I think you take off that one incher, you're still six foot flat. You're six one with How have I been measured 5'11 my whole life? They lied to you. If I'm six foot. They lied to you. Oh, they didn't want me to have a modeling career because they knew I would be unstoppable. It's the liberals. They're trying to deceive again. Yo, I can't go without thanking Dipsy for sponsoring this episode. Dipsy is an app full of short audio stories designed by women for women. Right, women? Yes! So what they do is they bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and characters and new content is released every single week so in between listening to your favorite stories you can always find something new to explore. And I should have mentioned this already but Dipsy also has sleep stories, wellness sessions, and now they also offer written stories. So you're set no matter how you want to consume these delectable little morsels. And for I spent a day with viewers and listeners of the Completely Uncensored podcast, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Padilla. That's 30 days of full, complete access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash P-A-D-I-L-L-A. Now, back to the world of Ludwig. So how does it feel now with this upward trajectory in your career? Everything feels like it's it's climbing and climbing and climbing, right? Yeah. Oh, I tell myself every day that it's all gonna crash and burn. Does that make you enjoy it less? No. I think it makes me excited to work harder so it doesn't crash and burn sooner. Mm. But it will crash and burn and mm. I know that. So might as well do everything I can to stop that. Right. You know it will eventually not be the same. I will fall off. Right. I will fell off like Gucci. For sure. You'll be L ratio. L plus fell ratio. Off. No crypto, no hoes. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of silly to not accept that and to like, you know, what, kick and scream because you're 40 years old and people want to watch someone who's 20. Yeah. And the other 40 year olds are taking care of children. Like right. what, what do you want? Like that's that's how things go. Mm -hmm. And something that brings me comfort is like I'll ask people, it's like name five actors that were popular 80 years ago. And it's like, you know. It's tough. Yeah. Marlon Brando. Right. My list is getting thin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it'll be the same thing, presumably 80 years from now. Right. And I think this is a huge issue, specifically with like streaming YouTubers. It's like, let me cement a legacy. Let me last as long as possible. Right. You're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not Alexander the Great. You're not conquering all of YouTube. Maybe that's how Mr. Beast thinks. But like, I mean, he time, might have a legacy. There's a time for him, too, though. Right. Presumably in the future, mm. no matter what the date is. And does it matter how long it is? 
So it's like, okay, is the joy from cementing the greatest legacy possible? I think no, I think it's like, okay, let's enjoy the ride and then bring as many people along for the ride as possible. What brings you the most joy about what you do, what you put out into the world? So my main motivation when I first started doing YouTube was that I uploaded every day and I had joy in the streak because I had a streak of two years where I uploaded every day. Uh, and I was like, I gotta keep this streak alive. And then one day I was like, man, I'm pumping out some shitters. Right, <laughs> right. Really, some, some stuff's getting through the sieve here. So, uh -huh. I, so I, I, I was like, let me break the streak. And then I kind of lost purpose for a while. And then ever since I started the company and I have you know, the employees that I have, it's like my new motivation is succeeding to cement their jobs into, into, and like that's a pressure that pushes me. Do you feel that too, a pressure? For sure, for sure. Do you like it? Do you like it? <laughs> I, I, I do, but I think that I try not to think too much about how every decision I make can potentially dictate someone else's life and financial stability because it, I think that it could make me a little nervous about taking risks and I feel like the only reason I've If you ever stop doing interviews, they'll lose their livelihoods, Anthony. You have to do one every single week until you die. They will lose their jobs. They will lose their families. <laughs> the animals are leaving. Shit! You have to save them. Every week, every week, come back every single week and every video better get more views than the last or my entire workforce is f Is that the darkest thought? Is that like the worst case? Like that you cannot explore new things because you know, that's- You know, my, my actual, I think that my worst case scenario is that for some reason one day I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I'm like, but I have 10 employees. So you're, you you want maybe one, one day want to wake up and then move to, to the Dominican Republic and just have a new life or just maybe do something else totally new. I think I never want to stop exploring what I'm capable of. Right where I can go creatively, new ways to express myself, new ways to challenge myself. That's when I feel the most alive. You've exited a YouTube before. I have. You've sold. But those weren't my employees. Those were a right. larger company. I was the employee actually technically at that point. Really? Yes, okay. yes. Because we sold Smosh in 2011 for stock, which ended up being worth zero dollars. And I became an employee, so I feel like I had the freedom to make the decision of, this isn't working, I'm stepping away. Mm. I feel like I, I I have a fear when things aren't going well that things are gonna always be bad. Right. And then when things are going good, I have a fear that things won't always go good. Yeah, so I, I think I think similarly. Like, I got the pressure too. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, I, like, yeah, maybe one day I do wanna wake up and not do it. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's why I gotta create my exit plan. Right. Which right now is off brand. And yeah. if that succeeds, that's a great exit plan. Yeah. If it doesn't, I need a new one. But that's also not the worst case scenario because you, it sounds like you enjoy trying out new things. Yeah. So if this fails, is that everything? You know, do you feel like you're putting all your eggs in one basket here? I think if it fails, that'd be cool. You know what I like is when something fails. You, okay, this is gonna sound weird. I've been super <laughs> okay with the idea of being cheated on. Like in a relationship? Yeah, I'd be super down to be cheated on. Not because I have a, a cuckold fantasy, mm. but because I would 100% know without a doubt that this was meant to fail and right. it should not have been a thing. And now I will never have to ever question that ever. And so, That's true. you know, companies are like another point in your life, like with relationships yeah. where, where like if you try it and it fails, at least you know for sure that you gave it a shot mm -hmm. and now you can try something new. That's true, you know, and a lot of people, and I was even like this in my relationships, I think we all were at some point, it's like, it's not working out, then you're like, oh, please, let's make this work. We could just, we, let's just let's just do these things. And the other person's like, nah, it's not working. And you're just like, well, maybe we can like go to couples counseling and we could make, and it's like, you're trying so hard when, you know, maybe even deep down, I didn't think it was gonna work. Yeah. And it was like, why don't, why don't I just admit to myself and the other person that it's like, it was a good run. I, I, I appreciate you and the time that we had. And doesn't need to necessarily be the heartbreaking thing of, oh no, my life is forever different. Yeah, I, th I did that for like 18 months, that song and dance in college with a, yeah. a girlfriend I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, well, you know, I don't I don't ever wanna not put enough effort and be the reason it doesn't work, but yeah. there's no line where it's like, oh, you've put the correct amount of effort, you can right. now end it. And, right. and so when she cheated on me, 
it was like terrible. But then I was also like, damn, this is sick. Cause now I am free from the responsibility of trying to make it work. And you're not having to ruminate on what ifs. Yes. And I think I have the same mentality making a company, but a company is much more black and white. Yeah. Cause there's, it's not like, oh, let's try to make it work. And then you, you drag it along for a while. Like it usually just violently implodes what if is, it's not succeeding. What is the equivalent of getting cheated on? The equivalent of getting cheated on is like you go bankrupt. Okay. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario. It's a non-profitable company for a long stretch of time. No one wants to invest in it. And then it, like, what are you supposed to do? I have a question for you. Yo, what's up? Tell me. This is my icebreaker question. Oh, oh, oh. So now that we're at the end of the interview, you're ready to break the ice finally. Mm -hmm. What is your vice? My vice, you mean weed? Is that it? You said it quick. It could be it. Is that the type of thing do you mean? Do you mean like the weed that I smoke? <laughs> Vice is generally, yeah, the thing that you do that is an immoral or act that's not good for you that you do too much of or yeah. partake in frequently. Um, so it's weed. I would say it is weed, but I do, but it's a weird, it's a weird little internal battle that I have because I'm like, I want to get to the, to a point, like my goal, my goal in life is to have every moment that I'm in exist only within that moment. So what I'm saying is when you say something to me and I get defensive because you said something that kind of reminded me of something that happened in my past and then like you should know better. I want to get to a point where you could say anything to me and I take nothing personally because none of my shit from my past is still with me now. I'm able to assess it based on the, the moment happening right now. Yeah, that's like peak communication. So that's that, like radiant and Valorant levels of comms. I'm ready to get there, S tier. Yeah, that, that'd be tight. Are you, do you think you're close? No, not at all. But I think the fact that I want that and then I'm kind of, every time that someone says something, I'm like, I feel like I can get back to the source. And most times I can get back to the source of where did that, that emotion develop. Is weed a shortcut to that or unrelated? Weed is a way for me to avoid thinking about those things. So it's kind of a relief from that. Okay. I want to get to a point where where I don't need any vice. Yeah, of course. To escape does. Yeah. from an emotion that I don't want to feel. I think a lot of times too, it's boredom. So then sometimes I'll be like, I'm going to smoke this thing and then I can kind of check out and you know what? I'm not even going to be able to work at my peak performance anyway, so I can relax. It's kind of a shortcut to relax. I think that's similar for me. Yeah? Yeah, I'll pop a gummy. <laughs> Cause I, you know, I worked at a vape company. It's not great for the lungs. Right. And I think it's for me, it's like, I want to be able to enjoy, like if I, I like watching anime. Yeah. It's like, I want to watch this and mm. I want to just be watching this and enjoying this. It's like a shortcut to be present. Yes. As opposed to like, like if I'm not, it's like someone hits me up and they're like, oh, we need a quick intro for the video. I'm like, okay, I'll go do that. Mm. I'll go do this. I don't really have that option. I'm not going to go do it high, mm -hmm. idiot. <laughs> yeah. But but that's like my shortcut to be able to, I think, enjoy things at a higher level. So that's my vice. That's your vice. Similar. Similar vice, actually, and for a similar reason. Yeah. Because we're too goddamn creative and um, get bored at the idea of not being able to work. And it's our excuse as Californians to just say we like getting high. True, because it's legal. Mm -hmm. And I can say it, mm -hmm. and I can do it, mm -hmm. because it's legal. And if you're watching from Malaysia, we, 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 didn't, we don't do that. No, 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 no. We're against it. Okay, I'll ask you some. You know what? Go for it. What creator have you not liked working with? Anyone you interview that sucked? Besides this interview? Yeah. No, I think that the, the, the toughest part sometimes is that with certain creators, there's a lack of communication. And I'm trying to guess if they, if like what time is gonna work and that kind of thing. But for the most part, I haven't ran into- So it's mostly issue. like they are like streamers. Is it streamers usually? They're just busy people. Is it streamers? That, see, see, I know you're trying to find like a specific name, but there's no specific person that comes up. We can drag him. Right, right. Was yeah. it Ray? Yeah, like Hassan, you know, I'm not talking about Hassan specifically. Was it? He could be bad at that. <laughs> he could be bad at communicating. <laughs> no, I mean, some people, you gotta like speak with them over a voice channel. And then they're human that gives you their attention. They are human. But if you are a message in their inbox. But if you are a message, you are just a text floating in the sky. Yes. Yeah. That they'll read and be like, I'll get to you later. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. But I completely understand it too. You won't put him on blast. I, I forgive everyone that has wronged me. If Anthony Padilla sends you a message, you don't reply within 60 seconds, you just don't care. No, I, I, blo I block you. <laughs> I, I respect that. I block you. Do you want to know something embarrassing? What? I ignored your message for the first few days. You have to re-ping me because I didn't think that you were Anthony Padilla. 
What? On Discord, you have this like anime profile picture. Oh, my VTuber icon. So I thought you were just like a viewer that happened to friend me and you sent a vague message that was like, when are we doing the call? I'm like, I'm not doing a call with your head ass. Like, who are you? And I ignored it. And then you followed up and I was like, oh, that's Anthony. My Good anime person. avatar didn't. My I didn't I didn't think that you would have an anime avatar. I didn't think about like how you You're like, this is a professional man. I thought you would be like, you know, I didn't think you were in the space enough to like have that. So I didn't even, I didn't even consider that it was you. And then I hit you up a few days later and you're like, oh, sorry, I missed this. Yeah, I lied. What actually happened is I hard ass ignored it. Cause I was like, I'm glad we could address this today and know that you straight up left me on red. I have to come clean. I left you on red. I didn't think that was you. So when you asked me who the worst person to ever interview was and to communicate with, it would be, uh, Ludwig sitting here in the room. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome to the worst guest. You know, we have a PB and J over there ready for you. I think uh, oh, dude, I would love a PB and J on the way out. I would love yeah, a PB and J. Yeah, I'm not you. even mad about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Dude, your tattoos are cool. Thank you. I just got I just got so many more. But I went all the way down. I went all the way oh, this thing. I went all the way down to What was that? What? The strap? My bra strap. What the is microphone. that for? Oh. So I don't have to have a visible. I thought it's to make your pecs look good. Oh. It's like, that's <laughs> genius. No. It might. It might work. It definitely. <laughs> it's, it's a little upper.